I mean, this just almost doesn't look fair. Hey, welcome back. All right, so we've got these fights from TAC. Thank you so much, TAC, for sending them in. And I want to make this clear. TAC is one of the best players I know. I've known him for, I think, three or four years now. I've been calling him TAC Natezi. Apparently, it's taken it easy. I just found this out. But I'm going to go with TAC from here. So he has been showing me uh, Tiger fights for quite a while now. They are very impressive. And I asked him to submit some or if he'd be willing to, he has. And he specifically chose some to highlight different parts of her kit or just different wow. Let's just, let's call them wows. This fight was specifically chosen to demonstrate the SP2 and how when he creates space, the whole SP2 becomes unblockable. Also, what her neutralize ability does, and you'll see that continuously refreshing. It's gonna be a passive that's gonna continuously refresh and that's going to give the defender a uh, negative 100% buff ability accuracy. So this is a rage node. And then we know how strange works and you will see no buffs uh, come up on him. So let's go ahead and start the fight. Take a look at this and, um, and, and we'll get into, I'll talk a little bit as we go. So see the polka dot power. So there has to be the damaging debuff so he can gain power. And she will be applying that through the rupture ability, which will also increase the damage or the chance for damage on the SP2. But you see, um, because he uh, she has awakened, she's starting in both of her stances. He has parried now and see the neutralize is on there. So that's, I think this is, that was the last buff. I think that arm up buff is gonna be the last buff you will see. You see how that special miss, he was in the heavy. He's going in and just absolutely brutalizing her. And then watch what he does here. He's gonna back up to make sure the SP2 is unblockable, comes in and just lands a massive, massive, massive amount of damage. And then all of those ruptures are continuing to do damage as yet. We got another unblockable with the SP2. He had created the space and the spacing is extremely, extremely important with Tigra. All right, so we're gonna see another kind of version of that. We've got this rage node again, and you're gonna see the same spacing um, techniques being used. In fact, he really does go into a lot of detail about how sometimes he's even going to use a light attack to create the space that is necessary to make sure that the heavy can land, right? So let's see this here. Because of the way um, the mechanics work out, he can just continue to utilize that heavy in the corner tactic. Of course, if Sabretooth gets power, then he can't do that. Charging that heavy and then just going in for it. He, let's see what he does with this SP2 here. He chooses to go ahead and heavy instead. And then because he had that space, the whole SP2 is, is now unblockable. And because he had stacked up so much of, much of those, um, of the rupture damage, the SP2 really exploded there. And you see that also because of the, the abilities he has set up or the masteries, much of the healing that Sabretooth should be getting is absolutely not happening. As you can see there, if you look, you see a green number every once in a while, but as the rupture damage continues to stack up, and he's just completely owning this fight. Nice evade there. It looks like he has the Nick Fury and Quake synergy going, which I think is really important. And I just can't highlight enough that this is very, very high skill level stuff. I think Tigra is one of the most difficult uh, offensive characters to use because you really need to learn the spacing between her and the defender. So you know when you can utilize your heavies and you can really work on their um, their specials and their heavy attacks. Because interrupting their heavy attacks with yours is also another way to increase her abilities here. So he's specifically chosen this lane and let's see how this works out. He's now stacking the ruptures because he has the neutralized ability that should be prevented her from gaining her furies right and as we know if she doesn't gain her furies then she can't uh trigger the living strands and then she can't do the auto block again creating the space so that the whole special was unblockable it's really smart i hadn't thought of that until i've really seen his videos here as the heavy he knows the spacing that was a great example we're talking about the spacing and knowing the spacing against medusa so that he can go in and use his heavy and know where he needs to end up. And then also we're gonna see this more and more 
I'll make sure to do my best to point it out that you'll see him use a light attack in order to move slightly closer to the defender. I mean, this just almost doesn't look fair. But having tried to play her myself, I know how difficult this is. He wanted to show this because he felt like uh, she's a great Ebony Maw counter because she's continuously knocking him down. That's another thing to really look at um, in these fights is how frequently the defender is being knocked down. You see, he missed there. He he didn't quite have the spacing right, but he is now adjusted. He missed the first heavy into heavy interaction, but he's now adjusted. And I, I believe if I remember this fight correctly, this fight is just now pretty much over. Look at the spacing he's got. He's holding the, the heavy, goes in with the punish. Mon now has no power, so he's going to continue to be able to land his heavies. He created the spacing to make sure that the special was unblockable. He's now landed that. He's completely knocking Ma down, re, uh, resetting all of those timers so he doesn't need to worry about the miss mechanic, the falter. I mean, it's just beautiful when it works and you have a player who's put in the time and effort to learn the spacing, to learn how Tiger works. These are the kinds of um, results you can expect. I always like to try to provide accuracy and provide the negatives when I do these champion showcases because you know, I want to show fights make them look great, right? So you can see like what they can do. The negatives are, this is very difficult. It's for most players, it's going to take a very long time. Metal Sonic Dude has some great Tiger videos out. I would recommend checking those. In fact, I'll, I'll link one of his how to plays. Um, but if you're familiar with him, you know how skilled he is at the game as well too. I think Tack, in my experience going back years, he is an extremely uh, skilled player. I think we may have seen our first uh, use of the light to get in there. King Groot is not always the toughest opponent, but this is was chosen to show how she can just shut down his various buffs. There it was. There was the light. Do you see? Watch. He'll do it again here. Light, hold the heavy. Goes in. I mean, it's just beautiful stuff. It, it's it's really cool. It's for me. It's exciting for a couple of reasons. It's exciting because that exists in this game. That's the level of detail and nuance that's been put into this game that we can utilize to our advantage. And it's also cool because my buddy knows how to do this, right? Like he he is put in the time. You see, there it is again. That one looked like it may have even been a medium. And then he just goes in to create the spacing. He's learned the spacing on how to do this with King Groot. King Groot is not gaining those buffs that he normally does. Tack is going back to make sure that his specials are unblockable because of all of the ruptures that are on. King Groot, those uh, specials are doing even more damage. I think it's the SP2. You increase each chance. Let me look this up real quick. I think by 10%. Yeah. And he's just owning a, a big, King Groot's a beefy boy. And Tack has just taken him down. And then um, he chose to use him and showcase this against this Red Goblin. Again, because of the knocking down mechanic, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, he's just shutting down this opponent. I actually found this opponent to be a relatively difficult fight. I mean, it wasn't too bad, but uh, none of my fights looked anywhere near as pretty as this is about to look. And these are a lot of, of the non-contact. Here we go. Let's, let's take a look at this. You see how he used the heavy and the spacing to get in there? Um, he's going to do it again a couple times. Let's watch this. See, he's using, his, he's using the attacks, the spacing. He's right up in there and then able to land that heavy. He's stacking the rupture debuffs. These were high, high health pool uh, bosses. It's really cool. Now, keep in mind, this is only non-contact specials. And one of the things uh, Tack and I have talked about it, for what feels like a couple of months here. I remember when he initially pulled Tiger, he wasn't as excited. I think he got it from a featured and he was looking for some other champions. And then he really started playing um, and utilizing her. And, and, you know, he's the kind of guy that's going to figure out some great uses for champions. And uh, one of the things he's talked to me about, though, is that there are some specials that you just assume graphically for visually, you're like, that's clearly a non-contact special. But he then found out that they actually are. They seem to count as, 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 um, 
as as count contact specials. So you're going to want to make sure you test her if you if you if you get them. Oh, this is was exciting to you. So of course it wouldn't be a true showcase if we didn't show a Realm of Legends fight. He said he was very excited because he only started with seven percent. He kind of wanted to show like this is what you can do when she is played perfectly. This is how little damage you can take, and this is also what she can do to heal you. So keep that in mind. She can be a healing counter. She can help you with some of those incredibly difficult to evade um, specials. She can provide immense, immense damage. She can shut down buffs. I think we've probably, if you're watching this video, then there's a good chance you've already seen her take down thing bosses. We've seen that and how she can prevent the unstoppable from happening. Something a lot of us didn't really consider when she first came out. Uh, so the list of things that she can do is long. The negatives are there's a very high skill bar to play her and that you're go I, in my opinion, you're going to need to go in and make sure you get the spacing down for each and every opponent before you go in and fight them and can expect success. So I think she's a great challenge. I think she can do amazing things. And I think if you're willing to put in the time, you're going to be extremely, extremely happy with your time investment. Look at this. He started the fight with 7% health and um, he's at eight. So thank you so much, Tack. Tack to Tezzy. You'll always be tacking to Tezzy to me. I appreciate it so much. And thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow on Twitter at VegaGaming583. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.